Welcome to Britain Reimagined. They were pioneers, poets and reformers. Women who shaped Victorian Britain, yet were nearly forgotten. Today we bring them back to life, not just as names, but as vivid human faces through the power of AI. From Queen Victoria to Ada Lovelace, meet the women who defied their time. This is more than history. This is memory restored. Number one. She was just 18 when she inherited an empire. So vast the sun never set on it. Behind the crown was a shy, overwhelmed young woman. Victoria didn't just reign, she reshaped the monarchy into a symbol of duty and restraint. But at what cost? She loved deeply, almost recklessly, with Prince Albert. When he died, so did a part of her. She wore black for forty years, never smiled in public again. A queen in mourning, seen by millions, yet deeply alone. Now look into her eyes. AI brings her back, not as a symbol, but as a woman of heartbreak and iron will. This is Queen Victoria, as you've never seen her before. Number two. They called her the Lady with the Lamp, but her real light came from within. In the Crimean War's dark, filthy wards, she walked alone at night, calm in the chaos. She wasn't chasing glory, she was filling a void no one else would. She challenged generals, rewrote nursing, and fought illness herself. Born into privilege, she chose the battlefield. Not just a nurse, but a force of change. Now look into her eyes. AI brings her back, not as a saint, but as a woman of grit, grace, and quiet rebellion. This is Florence Nightingale, as you've never seen her before. Number three. She knocked on the war office door, again and again. They said, no, you're not trained, they claimed. But they meant, you're not white. Mary Seacole didn't wait for permission. She crossed oceans, funded herself, and built a clinic near the battlefield. She healed the forgotten comforted the dying. Soldiers called her Mother Seacole, but history left her in the shadows, buried beneath another name. Now look into her eyes. AI brings her back, not just as a healer, but as a woman who refused to be erased. This is Mary Seacole, as you've never seen her before. Number four. They called her mad, but she wasn't wrong, just too early. In a world of gowns and gossip, Ada Lovelace wrote the future. While others saw machines that could calculate, she asked, what if they could think? She wasn't just Babbage's assistant. She penned the world's first algorithm for a machine that didn't even exist. She glimpsed AI, digital art, ideas a century ahead of her time. But genius came at a cost. Sickly, misunderstood, gone at 36. Now, look into her eyes. AI brings her back, not just her face, but her vision. This is Ada Lovelace, as you've never seen her before. Number five. She wasn't born to be quiet. In a world that told women to sit down, she stood up. Emmeline Pankhurst marched through London with fire in her heart. Jeered, arrested, force-fed, she never backed down. Why? Because she believed daughters deserved a voice. She chained herself to Parliament, risked prison, sparked revolt. And just weeks before her death, women finally won the vote. She never cast that ballot but she made sure you could. This is Emmeline, as you've never seen her before. Number six. She wasn't supposed to be there. Not in lecture halls, not in surgery rooms. But Elizabeth Garrett Anderson refused to walk away. 
every door closed, so she built her own. She taught herself Latin, memorized anatomy, and passed the exams they said she couldn't. Britain's first female physician, then founder of the first hospital run by women. She didn't just enter, she held the door open for others. This is Elizabeth Garrett Anderson, the woman who made healing her rebellion. Number 7. She wasn't made for drawing rooms. Beatrix Potter found her freedom in forests and sketchbooks. As a child, she whispered to rabbits and hedgehogs. They became legends. Peter Rabbit wasn't just a story, it was rebellion in watercolour. She outwitted publishers, protected her rights, and built an empire in ink. And when the world wasn't looking, she saved the Lake District. Quiet, fierce, unstoppable. This is Beatrix Potter, the artist who let nature speak. Number 8. They called her Queen of the Poor, but she wore no crown. Born into wealth, Angela could have lived in luxury. Instead, she built homes, funded schools and fed the starving. She walked London's poorest streets, quietly, relentlessly. Dickens praised her, Victoria honoured her, but Angela wanted impact, not applause. She became a baroness, but led with compassion, not title. An heiress who used fortune to forge futures. This is Angela Burdett Coutts, where privilege met purpose. Number 9. She could have stayed silent, wrapped in privilege, untouched by the world's cruelty. But when her daughter died, something inside her shattered and woke up. Josephine Butler didn't whisper, she roared. She took on the Contagious Diseases Act, laws that punished women without trial. She marched, wrote, shouted, facing threats, mockery, exile. For twenty years she never stopped, and when the laws finally fell, so did the silence. She didn't fight for fame, she fought for dignity. Now, look into her eyes. AI brings her back, not as a protester, but as a mother, a fighter, a flame. This is Josephine Butler, as you've never seen her before. Number 10. She wasn't just acting, she was a light. Ellen Terry stepped onto the London stage as a girl and never left it behind. Her voice hushed crowds. Her gaze held centuries of sorrow and strength. Shakespeare's women became her mirror, bold, bruised, brilliant. Off stage, she broke rules, married young, divorced, loved on her own terms. She stood beside Sir Henry Irving, not behind him. A muse, a mother, a rebel in velvet gowns. They whispered about her. She kept shining. Now look into her eyes. AI brings her back, not as a star, but as the flame behind the curtain. This is Ellen Terry, as you've never seen her before. Number 11. She stood before crowds and courts with the same fire in her eyes. Annie Besant was told to stay silent she refused. She left a loveless marriage, walked away from comfort, and chose the fight. In England, she marched with workers. In India, she ignited freedom. Slandered, jailed, exiled, still she rose. A scholar, a rebel, a woman who roared when others whispered. Her voice wasn't loud for show, it was forged by conviction. Now look into her eyes. Ale brings her back, not as a symbol, but as a force. This is Annie Besant, as you've never seen her before. Number 12. She was just 28 when she died, yet her words still echo in kitchens across Britain. 
Isabella Beaton wasn't just a writer. She shaped Victorian home life. With ink-stained hands, she penned the guide that defined an era. Household management wasn't just recipes. It was survival for women in a world racing forward. Few saw her struggle, pregnancies, debt, and the pressure to be perfect. Behind the calm tone was a woman fighting the clock. Now look into her eyes. AI brings her back, not as a myth, but as a quiet force. This is Isabella Beaton, as you've never seen her before. Number 13. She sat tall, composed, every inch of her practiced in quiet strength. Emily Davies didn't chase attention, she earned respect. She didn't just hope for women at university, she made it happen. When Cambridge said no, she founded Girton College, not a symbol, a real education. They called her stubborn, she called it principle. Measured words, unshakable resolve, she didn't shout, but the world still heard her. Now, look into her eyes. AI brings her back, not as a dreamer, but a builder of futures. This is Emily Davies, as you've never seen her before. Number 14. She never sought fame, just fairness. Octavia Hill sat with papers in hand, but her mission was people. Born into hardship, she knew the sting of instability. So she fought, not with speeches, but with action. She gave families clean homes, green spaces, and a sense of worth. They called her radical. She called it right. She never married. Her heart belonged to her cause. And through housing, parks, and the birth of the National Trust, she quietly reshaped a nation. Now look at her face. AI brings her back, not as a reformer, but as a builder of dignity. This is Octavia Hill, as you've never seen her before. Number 15. She held her chin high, not in pride, but in defiance. Frances Power Cub was born into comfort, but chose confrontation. She saw cruelty in cages, in courtrooms, in marriage laws, and she fought it all. Her words were fire, lighting the path for women's rights and animal welfare alike. They called her difficult. She wore it like armor. She founded movements, wrote boldly, and never backed down. In a world that told women to whisper, Frances roared. Now, through AI, she returns, not just as a reformer, but as a force. This is Frances Power Cub, as you've never seen her before. Number 16. She walked into factories where others saw progress. She saw danger. Lucy Dean listened not just to data, but to the breathless women behind the machines. She was one of the first to raise the alarm about asbestos when no one else dared. They called it safe. She called it deadly. Mocked, dismissed, even criticized by peers, Lucy didn't flinch. She fought for those too tired to speak, too sick to be heard. Her words came before the world was ready, but they echoed into laws and protections. Now look into her eyes. AI brings her back not as a footnote, but a pioneer. This is Lucy Dean, as you've never seen her before. Number 17. She wasn't drawn to the spotlight. She lit her world with stories instead. Charlotte Mary Young sat quietly, shaping generations not with power, but with pen. While industry roared outside, she crafted tales that whispered strength into the hearts of girls. She believed ordinary lives were worth telling and worth honoring. Her books didn't chase fame, they built foundations. In every sentence, a lesson. In every heroine, a reflection. She didn't raise her voice, but she shaped countless others. 
This is Charlotte Mary Young, brought back not for spectacle, but for the quiet courage she gave away, one story at a time. Number 18. She wrote through heartbreak, because stopping meant forgetting. Margaret Oliphant lost nearly everything, her husband, her children, her peace. Yet every morning she returned to her desk, hands steady, heart shattered. She didn't write for glory, she wrote to remember. Her novels weren't grand epics, they were lifelines, stories of grief, of resilience, of women holding families together with threadbare hope. Critics overlooked her, but her readers felt seen. This is Margaret Oliphant, resurrected not with fanfare, but with the quiet force of a mother who turned sorrow into story. Number 19. She didn't raise her voice, she sharpened it. Sarah Grand sat with grace, but never with surrender. She coined the term new woman, not to spark rebellion, but to hold up a mirror. Her words questioned everything Victorian society claimed was proper. Marriage, femininity, power. She left a husband behind and found herself instead. Through fiction, she rewrote what womanhood could mean, bold, self-defined, unapologetic. She didn't rage, she revealed. This is Sarah Grand, not just a writer, but a quiet revolution in ink. Number 20. She didn't just design dresses, she designed freedom. To the world, she was Lady Duff Gordon, but to fashion, she was Lucille, the woman who made elegance a statement of defiance. She softened corsets, raised hems, and turned runways into stages. Each gown a rebellion, each client a muse. She survived the titanic, scandal, and the snobbery of high society, emerging each time with silk in her hands and vision in her eyes. Lucille didn't follow trends, she invented them. This is not just the story of a designer, it's the story of a woman who stitched power into every seam. These women may no longer walk among us, but their courage, intellect and quiet defiance still echo through the streets of Britain. Which story moved you the most? Whose face stayed with you long after the screen faded to black? Tell us below, because remembering is an act of honouring. And if there's another forgotten figure from Britain's past you believe deserves to be brought back to life, let us know. We're listening. Until next time, history isn't over. It's waiting to be seen again. <laughs>